wait what oh wow we have here the pigment coats that is really an upgrade <laughs> So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today in this video, we are going to be featuring and reviewing the updated and upgraded version of the Miliang watercolors. This was sent to me by the makers of Paul Rubens because Miliang watercolors are made by Paul Rubens. This was sent last month, now it's October 2023 and yes, I saved the unboxing for you guys because I want to share my excitement with you so here's another packaging you know as much as I could I am recycling this packaging to minimize waste so here is another layer of protection because this is coming from overseas so yeah we understand the extra cushioning and now here is our Miliang solid watercolors anyway this set is currently priced at 35.99 US dollars or roughly a little less than 2,000 Philippine pesos it's available at Amazon in US UK Denmark and Canada I'll be uploading the links at the description box and also I'll include the website so we have here now 52 colors. I believe the uh, updated version last year or earlier this year, they had 48 colors. If you remember, a few years ago, we reviewed the 36 color set. But this one, I bought this one. But now I'm looking forward to this. I'm so excited because according to Karin of Paul Rubens, this is the upgraded version. They improved the formula of the paints and they also have added more accessories this time. So now in front, we have here in bold letters, Miliang Solid Watercolor 52 Colors. Then we have here the Parrot um, logo of Miliang. And sides at the back, we have here a preview of the colors that are included inside. And we have here a short product description. So here is the information of the company. So warning not for children under 3 years old. And it says here, made in China. Now let's see our palette inside. So we have here again another paper cover for protection. So here now is our purple metal box. So here is a uh, quick comparison. Before we had a pink one and now we have a purple one. They also have a blue one. One obvious difference is that before they printed here pretty excellent and now they only have here mainly young. Now let's open our box. Oh wow. So now let's check out the contents. We have here their brochure. And it contains the colors that are included. So here we have one, two, three, 13 times. So we have 52 colors here. So that means um, the full range is 52 colors. And wait, what? Oh, wow. We have here the pigment codes. That is really an upgrade. <laughs> because, yeah, before they didn't have the pigment information. So now we have here the color name, the pigment codes, the transparency rating, and the light fastness rating. So that's cool. That's amazing. And we have uh, the product description here. Million Solid Watercolors. Um, Shanghai Owen. So that's the same company that makes Paul Rubens watercolors. And now here is a swatch card. And also we have here the pigment codes, the color names, the transparency, and light fastness rating. I'm so happy they have the pigment codes now. You know, only few student grade brands provide the pigment information. And oftentimes these brands are the reliable ones. So I'm happy that they're providing it now. So here is, I think, samples of uh, watercolor papers. Let's see. Yeah, I really think so. This is watercolor paper. So we have here a few sheets. One, two, 
3, 9, 10. So we have 10 um, watercolor sheets here. It feels like cotton paper. I think it's cotton paper. So we are going to be trying that out as well. Here are our paints, but let's take a look first at the other accessories. So we have your sponge for cleaning the brush. We have here a pointed round brush. This is size 5. And look at the point. It looks so good. Oh my god. So we have here a pencil and a marker pigment liner. This is size 5. Let me get it for you. Yeah, point 0.5 and says here water resistant, water based. Let's see? Oh wow. So I'm gonna try to utilize all of this and this after our review. And now to reveal our paints, let's remove this uh, film. So here are our paints. They look like candies. Let's check out what's underneath this tray. I'm curious, just like in uh, my previous review of the uh, Pretty Excellent. So here's how it looks like from the back. And let's try to take out one of the colors. So it's, oh, it's placed in a metal pan. So here's one. Here's a metal pan, and here is a half pan. So the contents is yeah, a little less than a half pan, maybe 90% or 80% of a half pan. Anyway, for our swatches and sample painting, I'm using, as always, Arches 185 Gold Press Cotton Paper, and for the brushes, I'm using my Nevskaya Paglitra Golinski brushes. Also, I did not follow the sequencing of their provided swatch sheet. I uh, followed my own order and I hope that's fine. So if you are following through this swatching with your own paints, please uh, double check color names. We have 52 colors and this is quite a lot. So I'm just gonna try my best to do this quicker. First color is white using PW5. And obviously, we are seeing an opaque color. Next color is Lemon using PY3 and PW5. This is a vibrant cool yellow and as of now it's semi-opaque. Next color is New Gamboge PY74 and by the looks of it, it looks like a mid-yellow. Usually New Gamboge is on the warm side. Next we have Permanent Yellow Deep using PY83 and this is the warm yellow of this set. Next we have orange using PY3 and PO13. PO13 is fair when it comes to light fastness. It's benzidine orange if I remember correctly. Next is permanent orange using PO62. Benzimidazolone orange It's excellent when it comes to light fastness and this is the mid orange of this set. All the colors on this row are fine, they're all vibrant. Some are semi-transparent, but let's see when they dry if they remain semi-transparent. Next, we have Organic Vermilion using PR4 or a Permanent Red. The light fastness of this is fair. It's the warm red of this set. Next color is Scarlet using PR48 and PR207. PR48 is another version of Permanent Red and it's poor sadly when it comes to light fastness. However, PR207 or Quinacodone Scarlet is excellent when it comes to light fastness. So the mixture of this gives you somewhat fair rating when it comes to light fastness. Next color is Permanent Red using PR170. PR170 is Naptol Red which is very good when it comes to light fastness. Now we are starting to enter the cool red zone with the Carmine using PR176. This looks like the usual permanent alizarin crimson shade. Next is Quinacridone Rose using PV19. And it reminds me of the Quinacridone Rose color of uh, Daniel Smith. This is also transparent and vibrant. 
Now, next color is Rose Red using PV1 and PV19. PV1 or Rhodamine Violet is fugitive while PV19 Crinacridone Violet is excellent when it comes to light fastness. So the mixture of these two gives you somewhat fair when it comes to light fastness. But um, if you expose this to light, PV19 will stay and PV1 will fade. Next color, we have Bright Purple using PV3. PV3 sadly is a fugitive pigment, is emethyl violet, but this is a nice shade, I must say. Next, we have Deep Purple using two pigments. We have here PV3 and PB17. PV3 is fugitive, while PB17 is fair. PB17 is stalocyanine cyan. And this is a vibrant version of uh, purple, but sadly this is um, fair to fugitive because of the combination of those two pigments. Next is the Yoxazine Purple using PV23. I must say that this is a deep version. Next color, we have what they call Paint Gray. I copied what's written on their swatch sheet. And it's just paint gray, but I think this should be called paints gray. It's using PB29 and PBK7, and the shade is looking like just the usual paints gray. Next, we have here indigo using PBK7 and PB29. I'm wondering if it's really PB29, though, because this looks like a cool blue uh, mixed with a black pigment. But yeah, this is a beautiful shade, I must say. Next, we have here Prussian Blue, and this looks like a uh, usual Prussian Blue, and it's very transparent. Next color is Ultramarine Blue, using of course PB29. I'm not seeing granulation, so this is a fine version of Ultramarine Blue. Next is Cobalt Blue, using PB29 and PB5. This looks like a genuine Cobalt Blue, I must say. They did very well in imitating the actual PB28 Cobalt Blue. Pigment. Manganese Blue Nova is the next color using PB15 and we are now entering the cool blue zone now and this is just so deep as well and transparent. Next is Sky Blue using PB17 and PW5. PB17 is Stalo Cyanine Cyan and it's in sphere when it comes to light fastness it's mixed with uh, pw5 but i'm not seeing pw5 it's transparent next is marine blue using pb15 is to 3 and pg7 so this is yeah a typical thalo turquoise color and it's transparent and deep next color is deep turquoise using pb15 and py3 and compared to marine blue this is earlier next color is what they call cobalt tea although i think this should be cobalt teal i copied what's written on their swatch sheet anyway it's using four pigments pb17 pg36 pg7 and pw6 that's a lot of pigments but yeah as you can see it's imitating the cobalt teal color next color is thalo green blue i forgot to write thalo blue earlier but it's using pb17 and pg7 it looks like a deeper version of thalo green next is hooker's green dark using pg7 and py110 and this is a nice version nice imitation of hooker's green dark which usually uses the fugitive pg8 next color is viridian using pg7 or Thalo green blue shade this looks like a lighter version though next color is permanent green this is a mid green and it's using py3 and pg7 also very transparent our next color is lime green using pg36 and py3 this is a semi-transparent color and it's very vibrant not really a fan of this shade Next, we have here yellow green using PY3 and PG7. This is a warmer version of lime green. I prefer this one and it's more transparent. Next color is olive green using PB15, PY83, and PBK9. Looks like a typical olive green I was expecting. Our next color is natural yellow, PY42. And this is like their yellow ochre, so it's semi opaque. Next color is dark brown using PBR7. To me, it doesn't look like dark brown. It looks exactly like how burnt Shena should look like. Now, next color is Indian Red, PR130. This pigment is new. 
to me. This is the first time I'm encountering this pigment. But looking at this shade, it looks exactly just like PBR7 Dark Brown beside it. So I think they've mistakenly placed this color here. It should be uh, in gen red. It should be redder. And even in their brochure, the uh, dark brown and Indian red don't look similar. I'm not familiar yet with PR130. But yeah, it's obvious that these two are just the same. I wasn't able to find this pigment at artistcreation.com or at handprint.com. So I just did my own research. At hubat.com, it says that it's colonial black PR130. The definition is very technical, but I think it is light fast. I also found a seller of the pigment at Alibaba, and the name of the product says it's Iron Oxide Pigment Red 130 for wall tile concrete product masonry block. And looking at the photos, it looks comparable to PR101 Indian Red. It's a good thing I was able to find Simply Sima, another artist on YouTube, who has already reviewed the 52 color set and she has a swatch of Indian Red and I'm showing a screenshot now. And also yes, I asked for her permission. Next color is Fired Cold Ochre using PBR25. PBR25 is imidazolone brown and I don't usually see this in student grade colors because this is usually series 2 or series 3 in professional grade paints. This is not a cheap pigment so I'm happy to see this. Anyway, this is a uh, deep um, reddish brown color and it's very concentrated. Now next color is Burnt Brown using PBR7 and for me this looks like Burnt Umber. Next color is Raw Umber without an R. I copied what's written on their swatch sheet but I think this should be Raw Umber. It's using PBR7 but for me this doesn't look like Raw Umber, it looks like uh, Van Dyke Brown. Next we have here Ivory Black using PBK9. And yes, this looks like PBK9. It's a warm uh, PBK9. Next color, we have Coal Black using PBK7. And this is a more neutral black color. Now we're done with the 40 basic colors. Let's now go to the two metallic colors. Now we're done with the 40 basic colors. Let's now proceed to their metallic colors. We have two. First is Silver. And for me, it looks fine. I can see the shimmering. I hope the camera gives justice to the shimmering of these two colors. Next is gold. Um, I think this has slightly better coverage as compared to silver. And the binder is obviously transparent because you need a lot of, uh, of these paints to cover the black shape. Let's now have their macaron colors. They have 10. The first is champagne yellow using PY35 and PO20 with PW6. PY35 and PO20 are genuine cadmium yellow and cadmium orange uh, pigments. So I'm delighted and surprised to see these two pigments here. These are very expensive pigments, but I think the price is kept low because the percentage of white is higher. Anyway, the next color is pale orange using again a genuine cadmium pigment. We have your PR108 or a genuine cadmium red uh, pigment and PY35 cadmium yellow and PW6. Next is apricot using PR108 cadmium red, PY35 cadmium yellow and PW6. So this is a pinker version of pale orange. Next is Rose Pink using PR207, PR112, and PW6. PR112 is naphthol red. It's uh, fair when it comes to light fastness. PR207 is uh, excellent. It's quinacridone scarlet. Next color is Peach Blossom using three pigments, PR48. PR8 and PW6. PR8 and PR48 are kind of poor when it comes to light fastness, so be cautious with using this color. Next is Carmine Rose using PV23 and PW6, and this is the color of their tin. It's a nice orchid color. Next, we have here Lilac using PV23, PR122, and PW6. 
and this looks close to carmine rose but this is a bit warmer Lavender is the next color using PV23, PB29, and PW6. This is slightly uh, pinkier than most lavenders I know, but this is also a beautiful hue. Cornflower Blue is our next color, and it uses PV23, PB29, and PW5. And this is the lavender shade I know. Our last and final color is grass green using PG7, PY3, and PW6, and this is just a soft and delicate pastel green color. Just now, I have decided to just use the brush that is provided in this set because look at that point, it's so perfect. And also, I'm gonna be using the lid, I'm gonna remove the plastic tray so that I can use the lid as a mixing tray. So. Let's begin. So now for a closer look. For the color selection, because we have 52 colors here, we have a lot. We have the split primary, so I'm happy with that. I have no major issues in the color selection except for the error that we have here that I didn't receive an Indian red. I got two dark browns. I wish there was queen gold here, not necessarily PO49, but yeah, even convenience color or mixture of queen gold would be good. 22 out of the 50 colors are single pigment. 50 only because I did not include silver and gold. Pigment load is good for its price. The colors are vibrant, they're bright, but I don't think these colors have brighteners because our water is clear. Now when it comes to opacity, I can say that 19 are semi-opaque or semi-transparent. 10 are coming from the macaron or the pastel colors. The other semi-transparent colors are white, lemon yellow, nougam boge, orange, um, lime green, also the cobalt tea, cobalt blue, and the uh, natural yellow. Now when it comes to movement, no, that's not their feature. You need to help them and it's fine with me. When it comes to blending or mixability, I'm also fine with them. Now let's see how well these paints adhere on paper by rubbing a sheet of napkin. And for me, if we get marks here, that could be a sign that the paints are chalky. So let's see. So our paper is clean and I don't think these paints are chalky. And also, our water is clear from the bottom. Now for our comparison portion, let's begin with our student grade paints. And I think this set is less performing as compared to our Mil Yang 52 watercolors. Let's begin with Best Buy watercolors, Simbalion watercolors. We also have Dong A Creative, 
Faber-Castell Solid Watercolors, Sterling Arts, Sakura Koi Pocket Field Sketchbox, Giorgione Watercolor Cakes, Reeves and Tubes, Magiwa Basics Watercolors, Montmartre's Two Season, Marie's Watercolors, Marie's Watercolors and Tubes, Faber-Castell and Tubes, Pentel Watercolors Fine, Art Ranger Watercolors, Berkeley Watercolors, Bebeo Studio Watercolors, Lefranc and Bourgeois Louvre, Prank 2007, Prank 2019, Renaissance Watercolors, Superior Foldable Palette, you also have the Superior Fan Palette, you also have the Simi Art Solid Watercolors, Simi Art Arts, Arch Watercolors, Superior Watercolor, the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, we also have the Kuratake Gansai Tambi, we also have Owen Watercolor Cakes, the Owen Watercolors in Metal Case. Then we have here the Koinur Anilinki Brilliant Watercolors, the Mary's Masters Watercolors, then we have Windsor and Newton China, the Good Side Chinese Painting Pigments, the Grumbacher Academy, the Pelican Transparent Watercolors, and the Miyahimi Solid Watercolors. Our next set of paints are a combination of both professional grade paints and student grade paints. I don't think they are very comparable when it comes to characteristics. They are totally different. But my level of satisfaction for Mail Yang and this set is almost the same. So let's begin with the Van Gogh 12 plus 3. But I can say my bias is still for Van Gogh. We also have Sonnet watercolors. We also have Windsor Newton Cutman. Busto Artists watercolors. The Lucas Aquarel 1862. We're now entering the professional grades. Now we have Prima Marketing Tropicals. Kokuyo Kamlin Camel watercolors. But yeah, my bias for Kamlin. Then we have the Wichitrong by Silpacorn. We also have the Mungyo Professional Watercolors. And of course, the most comparable set against Million Watercolors is the earlier version, the Pretty Excellent Watercolors. I'm not sure if there is an obvious difference when it comes to performance when they upgraded. I'm not feeling it that much. I'm not sure. But of course, they expanded the range, they provided the pigment coat, and that is already a big thing for me. Now, let's proceed to the professional grade paints that are, I think, better performing as compared to the Million watercolors. Let's now begin with the last set that we reviewed before this, the Viburnum Art watercolors. We also have the Utrecht Artist watercolors, the Isaro Extra Fine watercolors, the Blocks Extra Fine, the Brunt Luxury Pocket Box, Paul Rubens Flores set, Paul Rubens in Pans, Paul Rubens 4th Generation, the Egal Yohani Watercolors, the Core Watercolors, the White Knights in Tubes, Windsor Newton Professional, we also have the Holbein Paints, and of course we also have the Mijello Pure Pigment Set, the Schminka Horadam Watercolors, and of course, lastly, the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors. Now, if you are going to ask me, would I recommend the Miliang Watercolors 52 color set? My answer is a definite yes. For its price, and you have 52 vibrant colors with a watercolor brush, with a pencil, a waterproof pen, some watercolor sheets, it's already a great deal. For beginners, this is a fun set, but I advise you still, if you have a set as huge as this, please still practice color mixing by using the primaries. If you are to use this for paintings to be sold or for paintings to be framed for display, please choose the colors that have 4 to 5 star ratings when it comes to light fastness. You can see that in their brochure. I checked this on handprint.com and artist creation and I think they're reliable. Some accessories were added to please more artists I think but for me the upgrade is more felt in the expansion of the color range and in the providing of the pigment information. The only main cons I see for budget sets like this is that currently pants or colors are not available open stock yet. So if you finish one of these colors, you need to uh, get another set. But who knows, let's just wait and see if Mail Yang will provide open stock of their colors soon. Overall, I really enjoyed using this set. I am also very happy with my sample painting. I had fun mixing my colors here. To the makers of Million Watercolors, Paul Rubens, thank you so much for sending me this watercolor set. So if you guys enjoyed this review, please don't forget to like and share this video. 
And if you are new to my channel, please also follow me to get updated on my next uploads. So, again, this has been Alan thanking you for watching this video. But please, don't leave yet. Please watch the demo of the watercolor paper. Now it's dry and I can say that the marker really worked as a water resistant marker and also the brush is really good. I was able to use it at my sample painting. The paper is also good. It's really tough. I must say. I think this is cotton paper. So yes, all the freebies are good except for my bookmark design.